some 18 months ago, I set out to skewer Donald Trump by comparing his behavior to various biblical characters. These essays varied from moderately amusing to rather too vicious. I finally ended the series, after 15 essays or so, when I determined that my assaults on the current president were in the end counterproductive to my own soul. To focus my wrath so laser-like on Trump was to descend to his own behavior, surely I did not wish to become what he so blatantly presented himself to be, namely a narcissistic bully who lashes out at his critics and can never under any circumstances imagine that he has made a mistake. By characterizing his actions in this way, I am merely noting what so many others have said. I fully understand that his many followers must find these traits laudatory, since nothing he has said or done over the past three years has managed to sway their support for him, as poll after poll continue to proclaim. Whether that support is 30% of the electorate or even as high as 40%, both figures represent millions of American voters. Though I remain frankly incredulous that he retains this high level of sustaining followers, the facts are clear, Donald Trump is among many a very popular man and president, along with Barack Obama, he was recently named the most popular man in America. I do not wish then, in this blog to bear my claws and have it the president once again, tearing my pound of flesh from his body, extracting thereby some Shylockian bond in order to gain a measure of crude justice for his perceived sins. Though it should be clear that I have no intention of voting for the man come November, choosing instead what a recent California yard sign claimed any reasonable human, I'd wish to point out that his most recent behavior, namely his commanded murder of a well-known Iranian general, has moved well beyond the fodder of late-night comics, and has become a dangerous game of potential world war. The fact that both he and the Iranian leadership have for the moment backed down from rattling sabers, or hurling missiles more accurately, at one another, does provide a momentary respite from potential scenes of skies filled with ICBM contrails and an earth chewed by high explosives of a nuclear kind. Still, little has changed between the two nations, Trump seems obsessed by Iran, and that obsession began with his withdrawal from the 2015 nuclear deal, worked out painstakingly over 10 years, and signed by both sides, President Obama being the American signatory. I will not opine in this space about Donald Trump's apparent complete obsession with his predecessor, though his undimmed fascination with comparing inaugural crowd sizes is still puzzling. But he does seem intent on undoing nearly everything that Obama's presidency tried to do, from affordable health care to environmental limitations to the Iran nuclear deal. The killing of General Soleimani may indeed have its deepest roots in that Obama concern, though I cannot speculate more on that, since I have no facts to support such a claim. The killing itself, and what it means for the remainder of Trump's presidency, is what interests me. Today, Jan.9, 2020, after the Iranians lobbed some 12 short-range missiles at two Iraqi-American bases, causing minor destruction and no casualties, the president announced that he was standing down from further military action and urged Iran to do the same. It seems odd that Iran might see a few missile strikes without major destruction or death as appropriate revenge for the murder, on foreign soil, of a man described as perhaps the second most powerful man in the country, but it may be possible that Iran has proved the point that it could well launch attacks with its vast missile arsenal if it so chose but did not so choose at this time. President Trump in his remarks today was glad for Iran's apparent de-escalation, but added that he proposed further, crushing sanctions, on the Iranian regime, in addition to those he instituted after his tearing up of the Obama nuclear deal. Let's block ads. Why? 